Hello everyone, today we're going to paint a cute mouse in the strawberry patch. I'm Diane and welcome to my studio where every day we paint together on a fun and helpful project to guide you on your watercolour journey. And please remember, if you don't mind, to subscribe and turn on notifications as this really helps us as well as make sure you never miss a thing. So the colours I'm going to be using for this painting will be um, burnt sienna for the most of the mouse's body and possibly a darker brown as well. For example, Van Dyke brown or burnt umber or sepia would do any of those. And then we need our alizarin crimson and cadmium red for the strawberries. We are looking at sap green for the leaves and for the butterfly, probably, or butterflies, if we decide to put more than one, we'll be looking at, I think, cobalt blue because there's nothing to beat a blue butterfly. Always quinacridone gold is bound to come in handy somewhere or other. And a lemon yellow because we might want to attenuate the green a little bit and yellow is useful for that. So plus as well, of course, my uh, Stettler pigment liner. This is a 0.3 millimeter nib and a Stettler pencil. Sounds like I'm sponsored by Stettler, but I'm not, unfortunately. Hey Stettler! <laughs> An eraser and my draw well brushes, a size seven and a size 14. I will put links to everything that I use, including these brushes, because I've recently discovered that you can still order them online direct from Japan if you want to go to that extent. Apparently they're still very in inexpensive, so even with the shipping it still works out cheaper than buying them from places in the UK or in the States. And they are very good brushes. So let's get started. Now this is a preparatory sketch I did a couple of weeks ago and I've been thinking about uh, when would be a good time to do him. And today, to tell you the um, it's the middle of the afternoon and if I don't do something now I never will and um, it's been one of those days so you everyone knows what I mean by it's been one of those days nothing seems to have gone right uh, anyway so what I'm going to do this is a sketch I did earlier what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this as I have so often recommended that you can do when you go online and you download my tra my downloadable traceables which are free at dianeanton.com um, and uh, then I'm going to uh, transfer that onto my piece of paper which is underneath and then we'll take it from there because um, I have a little plan for what I'm going to do. So you don't really need to watch me trace this do you? You know how to do that. So I'm going to turn you off for a minute and come back in a second when I've done the next stage. Okay, so I've uh, traced my mouse and I have gone over the back of it with some graphite. This is a uh, woodless graphite pencil, 8B, so it's nice and soft. So I've turned this into a piece of carbon paper. And then I'm just going to very roughly uh, get the outline. And uh, this is a very good technique if you're going to do something more than once and you want to practice the painting rather than um, the drawing. I'm not, I'm not um, definitely I'm in favor of, paint, of drawing. There is no doubt that drawing is really important. And I, I can obviously draw, but sometimes you want to reproduce something that you've already drawn and you want to do it reasonably quickly. Um, but of course I'm doing this to show you how to go about doing this so that you can see, uh, you know, it's a sort of tips and tricks kind of thing. So there we are, that should be okay. Yep, that's nice and clear. Lovely soft pencil there. Um, and then, having got my mouse on my paper there, uh, I there's, this is strawberry, okay. Then I'm going to just lift off some of the carbon, you don't need all of that, just a little bit, so I know where he is, and then brush that off. Always best to brush off 
the eraser bits with a, with a brush because surprising how much grease there might be on your fingers, especially if you've just come from the kitchen. So now the next step is I'm going to start inking him in because this is a kind of um, uh, pen and ink. So using my, what's this, a 0.3 liner and I'm working on a sheet of stretched paper. It's not very um, high quality watercolour paper. It's the kind of thing you could call sketch paper probably. And I have no idea really how it's going to work, but I'm sure for the sake of a little line and wash, it will be fine. It's not going to have to take a lot of um, water. Although it probably could. I have done some quite wet paintings on this paper and it hasn't been a problem. So there's his little tail with the little wings around it. And try and keep your lines broken as you uh, draw the different parts of the mouse. There's his little feet. And of course he's fluffy under the tummy there like that. And his little arm comes round like this and he's got his fingers grasping the strawberry that he is about to demolish. We have a lot of mice <laughs> here. We have a lot. You should go into the chicken coop at night. We have a barn that we keep the chickens in. And if you go in after dark, oh to God, it's like... <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it's like really, it's like a heck of a lot of mice. And his nose is there. And his whiskers are there. And <clears throat> it's probably not a bad idea to ink in his eye. If you find you get the light in the wrong place, um, you can always put it in with a bit of um, gouache, white gouache. It doesn't look too bad. Usually when you do an animal's eye, it works out better if you try to remember to reserve a tiny ring of broken ring of white around the dark part of the eye. It just looks better. And his other arm at the back there fingers. So there we are, there's our mouse. Now my idea was to have um, some strawberry, a strawberry plant here um, with leaves. It's really quite hard to talk and uh, concentrate on drawing broken lines at the same time, be surprised. Um, okay, another one up here, and then we're going to put a strawberry here. Make sure it's roughly the same size, roughly the same size as the one he's eating. And we're going to bring the stem along here a little bit, and we have another leaf. And let's put another strawberry here. And I don't know, should we have one down here a little bit? Perhaps a, another leaf. And uh, and a flower, five petals, and uh, oh yeah, maybe maybe another flower down here, and then what I'm going to do, this is going to go around the corner here and uh, 
going to do another leaf and then I'm going to swap from um, I'm going to swap to pencil. I'm not sure if this one is going to be yes that's fine. I'm going to swap to pencil because the top half of this painting is not going to be pen and ink, it's going to be pencil and ink. So the technique, which is quite nice, there used to be a Danish, I think he was, um, painter called Mads Stanger. I don't know if you've heard of him. And he used to um, do a lot of pencil and wash. Not ink, but pencil and wash, which is quite nice. I really like his work. So we just kind of draw in this sort of um, it's it's almost like a um, oh, what do you call it a border almost like a border uh, I'm gonna carry on up there and I'll do a few more of those as well and then above the mouse up here we're going to have um, some butterflies. So, uh, butterfly body, and uh, what do their wings look like? Something like that. So, we have a couple of butterflies, have another one coming this way, perhaps. There we are. And then I'm going to carry this on just around the top there and uh, I will come back when I finish doing that. Okay, so I've finished the drawing for now. It's probably enough to be going on with and I'm just going to, first of all, I'm going to wet the body of the mouse uh, before I start painting, avoiding the feet and the tail and the insides of the ears because I think those areas tend to be a little bit more pinkish. And um, I know that mice are a little bit grey on the grey side, so I'm going to experiment here and I'm going to try dropping in, first of all, some cobble, uh, cobalt blue. This is cobalt blue. And uh, you have to bear with me because I have not done it like this before. so the benefit of the experimentation here and then no I shouldn't put blue there because that's his tummy um, now I'm going to put in some um, burnt sienna this is a very very rich and orangey burnt sienna which um, is schminker Uh, it's not really very much like the um, Winsor & Newton one, I don't think. Anyway, to me, it seems much um, much more orange. Okay. You just drag that over the outside line a little bit. And you'll see how that goes and a little bit more there and then I'm going to oh I forgot to put out the potter's pink when I talked about the colors how could I forget my potter's pink potter's pink also from Schmincke but everybody else does it too and we'll use that for the feet and the tail and the insides of the ears oh and the little fingers and I'll just dilute that down a little bit and put some on the nose, just a little bit. 
<laughs> um, okay, now when that dries, we'll see whether we have to make any adjustments to the, um, to the color. I expect I'll need to come in with some darker brown in some areas just to give it a bit more um, shape. And now I'm going to paint the strawberries. We'll save that one to last. And I'm going to, what I did before when I did the strawberries on the teacup, I painted half, half of each strawberry in cadmium red, and then um, approximately half anyway. And then I swapped to alizarin crimson, which is uh, a cooler red. The, the, uh, the cadmium red is quite fiery, that's a sort of orangey red. So to give a dark shadow side and a lighter side, that was what I decided to do. And if when you get to this point you feel you haven't put in enough strawberries, then you can always add a few or you can wait till the end and add a few at the final stages. Uh, oops, what am I doing? I forgot about him. We'll never do, will it? Let the paint go over the edge where you've used the pen. It just does it. Well, that's what I do anyway. It's up to you. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, okay, so now sap green. And I think I'm going to blend that with a little bit of quinacridone gold. And I'm going to put in the, uh, the stem of the uh, stems of the uh, strawberries and just a little bit up here, a little bit less up there where I haven't got the ink. And then I'm going to water that down a little bit and add a little bit more yellow. And then I'm going to just start by dropping in some yellow into these leaves. Then I'm going to go back to my green with a little bit of, just a tiny bit of blue. And we'll put that in. And then and some green, <clears throat> that's cobalt blue and, uh, uh, no it's not, it's sap green and uh, quinacridone gold for some of them. And then I'm going to uh, make some quite reasonably strong green for the uh, sepals. Or sepals, I don't know, you call them sepals, sepals, on the strawberries. Is there anyone else out there that muddles up strawberries and tomatoes? I always want to call these things tomatoes, I don't know why, it's just red. What's the matter with my brain? I really don't know. Okay, and then we want a centre part of the flowers of the strawberries, which is yellow, and then cobalt blue just around the outside because the petals are white. And we can't paint white really, can we? Okay, so now I'm going to paint the butterflies and I'm just literally going to drop in some paint and let it run. And we'll see how that does. And oops, this one, same thing. That was meant to be a clean brush, but it wasn't. So we'll put that on the edge. There, and this one, let's paint like that. And just let that run. And then um, while that's drying, 
I'm going to take my pencil and just do some shading on these leaves because I'm not going to paint these ones. Wrong pencil. Just being visited by a wasp. This is my um, Stettler Aquarell black watercolour pencil, which I like to use for the bodies of my butterflies. And then back to the fine liner for the antennae. Then I'm going to, where I've forgotten to do the seeds on the Strawberries. I'm just going to go back in with my fine liner again and a tad more uh, green for these little I saw, oh, there it is, yeah, some sepals there and okay so are you dry enough? I think you might be just about dry enough and I think we will actually mix up a brown. I'm not going to use a pre-mixed brown, I'm going to use um, burnt sienna and cobalt blue to give myself a shady colour. We're going to have to let that dry again and see how the colour looks there. And I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper and just, just lift out a little bit of the blue there because it's run, but it's run a little bit too irregularly. Irregularly. There we are. <clears throat> and a bit of spatter up the top there. To indicate the sky, I'm going to use a little drop of, I don't know, why not use turquoise blue? Let's just see how that looks. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back and see if we can pull it done. So there we are, there's the final painting. One cute little mouse and his um, treasure trove of strawberries there, being watched enviously by three blue butterflies. Hope you enjoyed painting that along with me today and uh, look forward to seeing you again here soon, probably tomorrow, no doubt. And um, have some lovely strawberries tonight for tea, why not? If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, 
turn on notifications and uh, leave a comment. I love to read your comments. They're always so helpful and so encouraging and uh, really, really useful for us as we try to grow the channel because YouTube listens <laughs> and they're listening now and they know when we're doing it right for our uh, friends who are painting with us. So bearing that in mind, we really appreciate whatever feedback you can give us. Give us a share, give us a like, whatever you can manage. So I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you very much again for being here. Hope you did enjoy that and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.